So we're here to solve this arrow Sudoku by Michael Rios, and it's telling me that you know which one is arrow 8. Uh, I'm not sure at the start I know that, but maybe let's puzzle out what the title means and then we'll go through the solve. So I do see that there are eight arrow shapes in the grid, so something about uh, labeling the arrows might make sense. And I actually see that there are seven numbers in the grid, one through seven, and there's an arrow that doesn't have a number near it. So look at this. This is arrow 1, this is arrow 2, this is arrow 3. So the puzzle in this grid is that I know this is arrow 8. <laughs> it's the one without a number near it. I don't know if an 8 is going to be adjacent to it. I don't think the title tells us. Like, it does not tell us to put an 8 in that arrow, but it's at least a different kind of title, and it's, it's drawing attention to the numbers and kinds of arrows in the grid. It's maybe distracting from the start of the puzzle, which looks to be the center, and maybe it's looking at arrow 1 first, but one thing for sure is that this digit 9 can't go along an arrow ever. Uh, at least until we have two-digit arrow sums in this puzzle is a variation. So 9 has to be in the center cell. And the remaining digits, 1 through 8, add up to 36, and they split across four arrows. So the average arrow sum is 9, and we can't go higher than 9, so every arrow sum is 9. So the star of this grid looks to be putting in these five 9s into the grid. And every time you can place some 9s, you might as well try to place the rest. So let's see, this straight arrow is pretty forcing. It means a 9 is up top, which means over here is a 9, it means down here is a 9 because it's not on this arrow, it means over here is a 9, and it means there is a last 9. So that's a good start to the grid. I did sort of highlight that this arrow, the straight, is a useful one to look at, and that's because uh, it's 3 in a box and it can't have a 2 in it. So that means its minimum right now is 1, 3, 4 is 8, and it's also its maximum right now because 9 is eliminated from it. So. Uh, for sure, I've got 1 with uh, 3, 4 coming across as 8. Eight's another value. Once we get in the grid, it's useful to see if it goes anywhere else. It can't be on this arrow with three cells, so it goes in here. Um, that means this whole row is finished with a 7 and a 5 because of the 7 pointing up. So this 5 is going to put a lot of constraints on this sum. This is across two boxes, but this cell can't be a 1, so this is a minimum of 2. Right now it's also a maximum of 2 because this cell can't be anything but an 8 right now. If it were a 6, it doesn't work with this 5, and it can't be a 9. This is 8, 2, and 1. Um, that gives me a 1 in one of these cells, a 1 in one of these cells. Uh, this arrow with three digits along it uh, can't be a 2, 3, 4 because 9 is no longer valid for the space, so this also needs a 1. And actually the same thinking works for this one. This can't be a nine arrow sum, so a one has to be in one of these cells, which means a one is over to the right here, and we've got a three, four split. Is there more I can do straight away with some of these things? Well, I put in these two eights. Down here I can't have an eight in the middle, so an eight up top. Does that give me more constraints over to the side? I don't think so, but I think I'm now getting enough values like these eights and like this one that it might be useful to look at some of the pairs into the center and see where they go. Like here's an arrow that can't have a one on it and you can't put a one on this arrow because the eight is seeing it. So eight and one have to come together. So what I'm seeing is that these are the only three spots left for a one and that means actually these are the only three spots left for an eight. And the 8s aren't as interesting as the fact I now have 1s in these two columns in this box. So I get a 1 here, puts a 1 here, puts a 1 here, puts a 1 here, and that finishes with putting a 1 there. And that gives me the 8 for sure. So quick progress um, by just being exhaustive in how we are searching around the grid. That's probably still similar logic that we can do for other digits, and so let's still think like this 7 needs to be over here in this column from stuff I'm seeing. And what makes that interesting is the fact, can a 7 be in the cell? Well, no, it needs to pair up a 2, and a 2 is eliminating the cell, and it can't be in the cell because it's 7 there. So this is the only spot left for a 7. Puts in this 2. Um, 2 is going to be dodging that arrow sum. 7 is alone in the space, so I can mark that. Um, what does that mean? This 3 now has to have a 3 somewhere in this row, and that has a 3 here, and this will be 3 with 6. 6 is up above, so 3, 6 here. Last space for the center will be 5 with 4. Um, that gives me this 5 as last placement there. And the 4 in the top or bottom here 
and a three in the remaining spot. I'm gonna have actually a six in one of these cells and a seven in one of these cells. So I know for sure this is a three, one, four. Moving those digits across, got a three in one of these cells, just as some progress. Um, six and seven in the circle means I have one, two, three, or one, two, four. The two already in the grid means I know a two goes into the spot. Puts a two over here. Can I get away with not having a two in the space? Well, I could have a three, four, and actually looks like this cell has to be a three, four. It can't be a five. Um, so this could be a three, four and give me an eight. So I don't think I know more about this arrow, arrow eight yet, but what I do see is I've actually put three, four, three, four together in the grid. Does that do anything for me? Um, well, it eliminates threes and fours from these cells in the center. This row already has threes and fours, so it looks like I got a new three, four pair here. Um, that means a five completes the space. Six finishes it out with a five and four. Uh, this whole column is unfinished with a six. I'm going to have a five in one of these cells. Do I have more than that? I've got a two coming over here. I've got a four up top. Uh, didn't mark it, but this six, seven pair also puts constraints in a cell like this, where we've got this three, four pair. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine are all seen. This is a naked single of an eight with a three in the remaining cell. Um, that gives six, seven as remaining digits, but seven's got to be here. Six has to be here. That seven now is in this box. It looks like I have an effective either or cycle over in that corner. So this box won't be useful until we get other numbers. Um, it does though mean that this is going to be a three, four cell. So that leaves this as a five, six set. So maybe it's worth coming back to the left then. So we have six and eight to place in the spot. Um, this three, four, three, four pair actually eliminates options from the cell. So this now can be a two or can be larger like a five. But if it were a five, we don't get this value to make any sense. So this has to be a two. And that constraint now forces us to be a six because the option of seven isn't available. So six makes three, four, three, four, three. Uh, and four come out quickly. It also puts a four here, puts a three here, puts three and two into the grid. That four forces a cycle for the left, two down, three over, seven up. Uh, certainly have something we can do two of five up here, two to the right, five there, gives us two, last spot for five, puts in five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. There's the eight near arrow eight, and six and seven to finish the grid. So a pretty cute arrow puzzle. Really great start in the center, and then really good ways of working through the different three-digit arrows using some min-max constraints and some sum constraints. Really love seeing the three, four pairs. Not sure if they were required to use a solve, but I did use a solve in two ways to help in this box and to help get a naked single here. So uh, some clever logic along the way and a really cute uh, title, even if it's, uh, it's like we, we found which was arrow eight at the end, just as we had at the start. So thanks, Michael, for the puzzle. Thanks for you all for watching the video through the end. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you would appreciate this channel, and we'll see you again soon.